What is up everybody, it is Aug here, back with another video, and in today's video, we are gonna be doing one of the most difficult challenges I think I've ever done in Classic WoW boosting, and that is running through ZG11 pack without gear and without a UI. So I did keep on the boots for the minor run speed, but outside of the boots, I had no gear on. I didn't have consumables, so you could see that I have uh, 2,600 health and 6,000 mana on this guy with gear, but once we take off the gear, we're down to 1740 health and about 3.2k mana. And to do the run without the gear would be challenging itself, but then to turn off the UI so that you have no idea how much mana you have makes it just even more difficult. And the first death was actually really funny, and you'll see it in just a little bit, because I actually did not realize that I was still in combat when I tried to go through the reset spot and it's hysterical but I had a lot of funny deaths it took me about an hour and so I'm going to show you guys the pool and narrate the kill and what I'm thinking through but I died from anything from running out of mana to running into a wall and thinking I was far enough forward but not being far enough forward and dying to right here thinking that all the mobs had reset jumping down and then just having mobs come over to the side all kinds of reasons that I died. But ultimately, we were able to pull it off, and it was absolutely crazy. So I hope you guys enjoy this clip. Here I jump off the side. Let's get started with a quick death. And I'm sitting here. I'm getting ready to get started. I'm thinking, all right, let's mount up. You know, we'll just wait for the Berserker to be there. And then I was thinking, wow, that's kind of weird. I can't mount. I wonder why. And all of a sudden, some snakes come around the side and just obliterate me with no health, I immediately get dazed and down I go for death number one. The second clip I wanna show is a pretty entertaining clip. I think this was actually like the second attempt I was running through and I thought that I was far enough in the tree, normally I was, but Blink just didn't take me through the tree at all. Yeah, I just got smacked. Now this death was kinda of wild because I hadn't seen the Berserker so I figured, you know what, I'd just go over and check on the Berserker. And if you're wondering what this is, this is my pally getting boosted at the same time in the other account. But typically when you swim through the middle here, you can get by these crocs. But for whatever reason, I've never had this happen. The crocs on the right aggroed. So it must have been perfect timing for them to swim down and aggro. I've literally never had that happen any other time. And I went down again. After about an hour of attempts though, and a lot of pep talking from the stream, we were finally able to pull it off with this clear right here. And so, as I said, the hard parts with this are going to be the fact that you have, you know, very low mana. And so even just blinking is something like 15% of your base mana or something like that. It is a massive amount. So if you blink too much, you're going to go oom. If the Berserker's in a bad position, you have to 100% use a swim speed pot and hope that your shields don't go down. There's one point where my shield just got eaten alive and I died with thinking that I had nearly 100% health. So you have to be very cognitive with the amount of health that you have. You also don't have much health. And you also don't have any armor. So whenever you do get hit, you get hit a heck of a lot harder. So you have to avoid damage at pretty much every single point. But there were little things that I learned along the way. And honestly, if you guys ever, you know, have the goal of just, you know, wiping a couple times, but learning, this is actually a great strategy to do in all the farms. Because what you end up learning is little nuanced tricks that can help you out with the overall farm itself. So it's not just, you know, for a challenge mode. It also teaches you some minor things that can really help. You also see that I have a 60% mount, so don't have a 100% mount either. For example, though, one of those is how to properly mana regen. So for those of you who do not know, after five seconds of not casting, your mana regen starts going at maximum rates. However, when you cast, it then goes down to your MP5 while casting rate which is drastically lower. So if you want to properly maximize the amount of mana that you have, which I needed to do for this pool, you really need to batch your spells together. So let's say you're gonna go over to a position where you're gonna go slow fall, and you also need to put up an ice barrier. You don't put up the ice barrier, then wait 10 seconds, then go slow fall. You do both of those just one after the other, and then you use those four seconds extra to basically just sit there and just try to regen mana and try to get your mana gen counter going. Little things and little nuanced tricks like that or proper positioning to not take any damage from mobs when you blink and things of that nature really make a world of a difference in these farms. And by doing you know, challenge modes like this, trying to do without gear, trying to do without a UI, you can really kind of hone in on the things you might be relying on a UI for, or relying on gear for, that can then make your runs even more successful. 
And so this has helped me in Mara. This has helped me in SM. This has helped me in uh, ZG. Definitely would recommend doing this. And honestly, after after doing this, I think I've I've only wiped one time with an eleven pack pool. After doing this, just because of the the trials and tribulations that you do have to go through. But here to start off the pool, we are waiting for the Berserker. I decided that I did not want to go down and swim through the water. For those of you who don't know yet, if you are out of range of a mob, if you can't see him on his, on your screen, he actually will be walking slower, so at about 10% speed. And so that's why sometimes you can run into the axe thrower pat when you come back across the bridge. It's the exact same reason. They basically just aren't activated on your screen yet, and so you have to activate them. Typically, the way that we would activate them is we'd swim through the water down below so that we're closer to the Berserker to be able to see him. However, that's not really an option here because the uh, the crocs just eat us alive. And that's what we saw in the clip just a second ago where the croc just ate us alive. But here you can see the berserker is coming around the side. And so in just a few seconds, we'll be able to start the run. All right, so here we go. We get shielded up and everything like that. We wait for the berserker to cross over the right threshold so that we know that we're going to be safe to start the run. And we go. One quick trick I have and I recommend here is jump into the wall. So there's this little kind of delay when the mobs will run after you if you jump into the wall. And especially with a slow mount, it's going to take you a little bit longer to get around these crocs. So if you're jumping into the wall, the crocs will occasionally kind of freeze and then not run right at you, which will potentially help a lot with your jumps. Then when you come through here, you want to make sure that you take a wide route. So this is one of the main trouble spots. You could potentially take enough damage to get dazed. And so you're not going to get dazed if you're facing the mobs, but obviously you have some mobs hitting you from behind. And so it's really important to kind of take the most direct route possible to aggro all the mobs, but then get out of there. And so what I like to do is I like to run from the left side where I don't aggro the tigers right when I run by them, sprint kind of back in and make a really quick dash out after making sure that I grab all the elites. We then jump in the water and make sure that we avoid the fish and make sure that we jump far enough and I'm actually going to hold my blink. So I hold my blink here for two jumps and then blink. What that does is it lets me jump further down this kind of area. Also got one shot on these crocs before. It lets me jump further down this area so that the mobs aren't just right on me when I come around this bend. And sometimes you can get one shot if the mobs are right on you. So if you find that the mobs are too close to you here, it could be that you're not blinking properly. You have to remember that every single time that you drastically change your position, aka blink, the mobs recalculate the most direct route to get there, which is always going to be a straight line. This means that them taking that straight line, if you blink earlier, is going to adjust it earlier, which and then you're going to be swimming. So you're going to be moving slower. So they're coming towards you at a point where you're moving slower and they're, and they're taking a more direct route. So by waiting to do the blink for a couple jumps, you're actually going ahead and getting some extra distance. Here, the Berserker was obviously in a horrible spot, and this is where I was freaking out. I was like, holy crap. And you can see the Tigers are down here, so they're you know ready to just end the run. But I pop a Swim Speed Potion, and I have everything keybound, so I knew the keybind. So I was able to pop the Swim Speed Potion. I get around the side, and Swim Speed Potions are huge, guys. If you haven't used them yet, anytime that the Berserker is in a bad position, pop a Swim Speed Potion. It'll let you get by the Berserker, and you'll be good to go. We pop the swim speed potion, we get by them, and here is where I'm kind of banking my mana. So I know I need to cast another shield, but I'm holding on to that shield until I get right into the water so that I can blink almost immediately following that shield, knowing that I'm not wasting any of the potential mana per five that I could be regenning. Come up here, we grab the crocs, we're like, all right, you know, we made it to this point, this is great. We got one tick right there of a hit against us, so we know that the shield is now lower, so we know that we're going to need to reapply the shield when we jump down. We also see these Axars here, so I am freaking out about that, and they somehow do not pull, which after looking at this clip, I, well, oh, actually they did pull. Whoops. I forgot that I had to reset it once before I was actually able to go back through. All right, here we are again at the start, and so we are now going back through again, and so you get to see the opening again. I completely forgot about that. So you know what, not to waste time, it was pretty much the same exact run through the start here. Uh, to get to that point, I'm going to skip ahead to that bridge, but if you ever aggro the axe servers, that is a reset spot you could use. Don't try to do the pull with them, you'll just end up dying. So here we are again, crossing the bridge. You can see that I haven't put on my shield yet. Same kind of idea as before. 
because I knew that we got hit, I wanted to make sure that I cast my shield later on. I did cast it there though, so it'd be back up when I come back and loop back around. I jump up onto this spot, which is actually a reset spot, so it kind of it kind of freezes the mobs for half a second, so that's something you could use. I wait to counterspell until the very end, face pull this one mob, let the crocs get closer, and then blink through them. So what I do there is I face pull that one. That causes the mobs in the back, the crocs in the back, to start running towards me. I then can blink through them and only get hit by one or potentially none of the crocs in the back, which really, really helps out. Here I cast blink and mage shield, mage armor, sorry, at the same exact time pretty much. One second, obviously, for GCD, so that I can maximize my mana regen, get to the bridge, and we get started with the pool itself. Now, the kill actually only took six minutes, and I should remember that when I looked at the video and it said 13, but the actual kill itself only took six minutes, which I was actually pretty impressed by, because with the amount of mana that we have, we have basically half the normal mana, and so I was thinking there's no way that we we're going to have enough mana to make this go well. But there is a trick and that you guys can really see with this strategy because we don't have a UI, and that is using Fire Blast. So what I do is when the Cubs are still alive with a 17-pack pool, but in this case also doing it since I have no gear, I rank one Blizzard until I get a clear cast, and then I Fire Blast every time when they're on the bottom. So here I'm going to jump up and rank one Fire Blast. And what I'm doing is I'm watching out for a clear casting. When you see a clear casting, there's actually a small animation you can see on the screen, and so you're going to be able to see it as soon as I get a clear casting right there. And it's going to show, okay, now I have a clear casting. And I got really excited in the stream because I'm like, okay, perfect. I can actually see that. I know that I'm going to get those. So now I went for clear casting. I got a back-to-back -back clear casting. Obviously, you can tell that I was a little bit excited. And then I knew that I was in a pretty decent spot for this. And so I was able to get off enough damage to, I think, take out the Cubs. Now, obviously, I don't have frags on, so I can't 100% sure for sure see if the Cubs are dead until I see their corpse. But it looks like they were still alive just a little bit. But I go back into rank one because I'm thinking to myself, there's no way that I'm going to have a ton of mana. And there are some Cub corpses, so we know that we're kind of safe. The issue with the Cubs is that if you don't keep up a permanent blizzard at all times, the Cubs can just run right by you on this bridge and go aggro extra mobs, and you have to focus them down. But if you maintain Blizzard at nearly all times, the Cubs will actually automatically get back into combat with you and they won't run by you. So just keep up your Blizzard and you're 100% good to go with the Cubs. But here, we can see that we're going back and forth and we're trying to proc those clear casts. We're using rank one Fire Blast every single time the mobs come towards us. That way we can proc that extra potential chance for the clear casting. And then as soon as we ever get a clear casting, you always do max rank Blizzard. Here I did see that the mobs kind of got separated though. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to get them on a fresh run back down. And so what you want to do if they ever get separated like this, the second that the very last mob in the back gets clipped by uh, rank one blizzard, that's when you want to jump back up. You basically want all the mobs to have the maximum tick of blizzard because the mob at the front, when they're separated like that, is running out of their blizzard. And so they're going to run full speed at you soon. So as soon as that last mob gets clipped, that's when you want to get back up to the top and you want to get back into your blizzard rotation. So here I'm just waiting for clear cast. I can tell that I can't cast another blizzard. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to evocate here because I should be completely tapped on mana and go back into it. But now I know that I should have full mana pretty much because I don't have any gear on. So I don't have much mana at all to evocate. But we go ahead and we get back into the pool. And guys, it is crazy. I was so focused trying to make sure that I got these down and being so conservative and only going for burst rotations with clear casting. I think until I saw the mob start dropping. I did get really lucky with clear casting though, retrospectively looking at it. I mean, I've gotten like five clear cast procs already, which it's a 10% chance. So that's pretty good. But like I said, I highly recommend trying to pull off this farm if you guys are, you know, pretty experienced with the ZG pools but you think there's maybe some minor tweaks that you can make to improve i recommend doing these challenge runs and or apply it to sm or mara or zf even anywhere that you go and you do your farms they can really help teach you the little things by making it harder on yourself you kind of see those little aspects that you might be missing out on but here all the mobs go down you saw that i had no gear and you can see it now but when I go to show my actual gear at the end, I accidentally hit my uh, macro to put on my chest piece. And so clearly I don't have a chest piece on, but when, if I was to pull up the gear afterwards, you'd see that it had the chest piece on because I tried to um, click that at the end right there and you can see it comes on. But overall, they died. We got all the mobs. You can see all, I think it's what, 41 plus 12, so 53 mobs. 
But this is so much fun, guys, and I highly recommend you guys try it as well. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live, and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.